Three years ago, when I both started getting serious about developing games and creating devlogs for my new YouTube channel, I suddenly had a lot of new stuff to manage. For my games, I needed to keep track of my ideas, gameplay systems, characters, and plenty of other things like bugs and feedback from you all. I also needed to keep track of my progress building all that. For my videos, I needed to manage a schedule of what I wanted to produce and when, along with associated scripts, A-roll and B-roll, and more. Since that time, I've experimented with a lot of different tools and a lot of combinations of tools to help me achieve all that. Off the top of my head, I can think of pen and paper, Apple Notes, Good Notes, OneNote, Bear, Obsidian, Hack and Plan, Trello, and I'm probably forgetting some more. For one reason or another, all these tools came up just a little bit short for my particular workflow, so the search continued until I found Notion. Notion started as just a place for me to organize notes, both personal and for Dauphin, but once I started to understand what the tool was capable of, its role in my daily life grew substantially. Of course, it's still home to all of my notes, in a more organized fashion than ever before, but I also now use it to track every aspect of my game's development, plan every video I release on YouTube, build shared plans with my wife for Project at Home, and a lot more. Many of you have noticed this tool in my most recent devlogs and have asked for more information, so today I want to walk you through why Notion's a really good fit for my workflow, how I use it for game development, and kind of more broadly how I use it for productivity. It's important to note that Notion is sponsoring this video, but not my use of Notion itself. I discovered it long before this partnership thanks to the folks in Discord, and I continue to use it because it's honestly a great fit for me. To add to that, Notion has not really told me what to say in this video, so I'm excited to share an authentic account of how I use the tool and what I like about it. Thank you Notion for your kind support of the channel. I'll start out with the features that drew me to Notion in the first place, which might be kind of surprising because it's really none of the features that make Notion so powerful. A big consideration when choosing a tool for my workflow was cross-platform usability. For me, that means a good user experience across all my primary platforms, which are Windows, Mac, and iOS. Notion is available on the web, which of course makes it available pretty much anywhere, but there are also native apps for Windows, Mac, iOS, and Android, including a Mac build for Apple Silicon. I find native experiences to be almost always nicer to use than just a website, so this was a big win up front. My desire for a good cross-platform experience did not end there, however. This might sound a bit cheap and a bit demanding, but I was really on the search for a tool that would allow me to sync all of my data across these devices without having to, one, pay a subscription fee, or two, use a third-party cloud provider to do it myself. I have no problem paying for high-quality software, and I say that as someone trying to build a piece of software that I will hopefully sell for money one day, but I just feel like sometimes I don't need another subscription in my life, and to my delight, Notion will sync up all your data across all your devices for free. The other feature that got me on board to start is Markdown support. I have written my fair share of documentation in Markdown over the years at my job and have gotten to the point where I can write pretty nice looking notes fairly fluently with it, so it's something I love to have in a productivity or note taking tool. Those two things alone got my foot in the door with Notion and honestly rule out a bunch of those other apps that I mentioned at the beginning of this video. What's kept me hooked is how Notion can represent the data that you input and how flexible it is for different workflows. So next I wanna walk you through my game development and YouTube and even some of my personal pages to show you how I use it. And it's important to note that I'm still pretty new to Notion having only used it for a handful of months now. I'm hoping that could be a good thing. If anything, my rather simplistic approach will hopefully be even more replicable if you're also just starting out with Notion yourself. So first my DevDuck page. When you're working in Notion, you can kind of enter data in two ways, either with a page or a database. We'll talk about databases in a second, but for now what you're seeing here just started out as a blank page, and within that page I've added some links to other pages. I really like having kind of a landing page for my DevDuck stuff, as well as my personal life and work. And what I suppose you could call the page hierarchy on the left hand side, you can see that all these linked pages are just children of the parent landing page. When you go to create a new page, you have a couple options. You can create one and link to it right in line here alongside a bunch of other stylized content types, or you can create a new page over in the hierarchy. In either case, we end up with a blank untitled page and some options for what we want to do with it. My first inclination was to explore the templates, which I still think is a good place to start, but I ultimately found these a bit overwhelming. What's important to realize is that these templates, even though they all look very different, all come from the basic options you see here on our new page. The first of these options is just to keep our empty page. To do so, you can select empty with icon, empty, or just start typing in text content. You can always add an icon or cover to this page later. This is how I built my DevDuck landing page. Our other option is to create a database, which is a collection of pages, and I think that will make more sense here in just a moment. All the types here are worth exploring. For game development purposes, I wanted to create a task board similar to what I had in Trello, so I chose the board option to track my development progress. Right away, you're presented with a page that has a pretty familiar layout if you've ever used some kind of task board. Databases, for me, are what make Notion really impressive. 
Each entry into a database is a page. You can see this here in our default board database. Three example entries have been created for us, and when you click on one of them, you can open it up and see that they are, in fact, just empty pages. Each of these pages, or items in the database, have properties, and these properties are totally customizable. In this default board database, we have some properties set up for us, and we can see those by clicking the Properties button up at the top. Our entries into this database currently have a name, status, and assign property. These properties are what are used to create the visual representation of the data that you see here on the screen. If we click the Group tab up here, we can get a better idea of how this visualization is being created. We're currently grouping on the status property, which has three values, not started, in progress, and completed. That's what's informing the layout of this board page. Each column represents a collection of entries grouped by that status value. We can see how the view changes if we were to group by the assign property instead. We don't actually have anyone to currently assign tasks to, so now there's only one column displayed, no assign, and it contains all of those sample entries. To take this further, we can actually create our own properties. Everything here is just a default placeholder, so we could remove these and add our own properties with any name of many different types and use them to inform the layout of our board. Now I know I'm kind of droning on here and this isn't meant to be a tutorial video, but what I really want to emphasize is how powerful Notion can be given that you can assign any number of custom properties to your data and visualize that data with all these different database types. So for now, we'll wrap up with this kind of default database and I'll show you what some of the views I've created for my projects look like. So here we are on my DevDuck landing page and you'll see I have a link to a page called Dauphin, which is my current game project. When I click on that, I go to another landing page for everything related to that project. My Dauphin development board is most closely related to what we were just looking at, so we'll jump in there first. Right off the bat, we can see my overall task board view. It looks very similar to what I had in Trello because I was able to import all of this directly from Trello over here with the import button, which was awesome. For this view, I'm grouping on a property I created called type, which represents the type of work item each entry corresponds to. So I have features, enhancements, bugs, etc. What you don't see in this view is any notion of what I currently have in progress. I have a status property for that, but I'm not grouping on it here. To solve that problem, I can use a very powerful feature of Notion, which is the ability to create multiple views for the same database. You can see this in the top left corner. This is my backlog view that we're looking at currently, but I also have an active board view. When I select this, the view changes completely, but the underlying data is the same. For this active view, I have both a group and a filter. I group by status to get my typical task board lanes, and I filter on a custom property called active, such that this view only shows tasks that I mark as actively in development. With these two views, I have everything I need in one place. When I'm planning out my week of development, I can open my backlog view and select the tasks I want to activate. To do so, I open an entry, check its active property, and move its status to not started. I repeat that process for all the tasks I plan to work on, and once I'm done, I can swap to my active board view to track my progress throughout the week. This flexibility to represent one database in a number of different customizable ways is what made me really start to fall for Notion, and you can take this even further than what we've done just now. For example, when you go to create a new view for a database, it does not even have to be the same type of view that you started with. If I wanted to, I could create a giant list view of all my tasks for Dauphin and group those in an entirely different way. While we're here, I'll also show you some of my other pages for Dauphin. I've recently been working on the skills system, so I have a skills database. This is, again, just a collection of pages, but I don't really need any complex organization here, so I just opted for a gallery view because it looks nice. My story database, while quite empty, is a list view because it will ultimately grow into a large ordered list of the chapters that will make up Dauphin's story. Hopefully that gives you an idea of how I use Notion for my game development projects. I really just have a parent page for the project with a bunch of child databases that describe everything about that project, from development tasks to gameplay design, notes, ideas, you get it. Once I figured this out from my game projects and it all kind of started to click a little bit, I very quickly moved over a bunch of other stuff in my life into Notion as well. One example is my video planner, which holds most of the stuff related to this channel. Each entry in this database represents a video, and I use a table view here to visualize various important properties of those videos. Because each entry is a page, I have a perfect place to store my scripts. Keeping all this information together in one view is really helpful. If I open up my personal page here, you can see some of the kind of lifestyle stuff that I track. One good example is my workouts database. If I open that up, you'll see that I've created entries for two different workout programs. I'll go ahead and open the GSLP one here, and you can see that I have a bunch of stuff in this page. Not only the outline of the workout, but a log at the bottom. A really cool feature of Notion is that for a table, or really any database type, you don't actually have to create a dedicated database page. Within an existing page, you can create all of these database visualizations in line. 
I actually just use a simple table for this workout log, but if you wanted to, you could have a proper Notion table in line here with all the custom properties and everything. Another fun page is my nutrition page. Here I have two checklists, one for Publix and one for Costco, and some embedded pages for things like recipes. Unsurprisingly, the recipes page is a table database where I've started to enter some of my favorite meals. An amazing thing about this nutrition page is that I'm able to collaborate on it with my wife for free. She created a Notion account and I was able to share the page with her and we can both go in and make modifications to the grocery list. Along with the syncing of data between devices, I am totally shocked that this is a completely free feature. I could continue to walk you through some of the pages I've set up, but I'm guessing you kind of have the idea by now. Notion's pattern of pages and flexible databases have made it a great fit for organizing a lot of the stuff in my life. And there's still more I want to do with it. Create a habit tracker, maybe a daily journal page, and honestly, whatever else I think up. It's certainly worth mentioning that there are a few areas for improvement I've noticed within my first few months with the tool. Load times for pages can be variable in my experience, though never prohibitively long, and unfortunately your content is not available offline. Though I do believe the Notion team has identified plans to tackle that in the future. Your content is also not end-to-end -end encrypted, which doesn't really bother me based on the nature of the content I put in Notion, but if you want to learn more, there are other videos on YouTube that do a good job explaining that. Overall, as I'm sure you can tell, I am a pretty big fan of Notion. It's a great place for my notes and plans and basically all my project management stuff, and it works across all my devices for free. If you actually look at the pricing plans for a solo user who doesn't need a bunch of team features, there's not even a limit to the amount of content you can put in there. So I don't see myself needing to buy a subscription at any point in the near future. If you've been jumping around as I was looking for the ideal productivity app for your workflow, I don't think you have much to lose by trying Notion. If you're interested, you can do so using the link down in the description to let Notion know I sent you. I hope you found this overview helpful. I'm excited to take more advantage of this tool and talk more about it as I use it in future devlogs. Until then, thank you so much for watching. Thanks again, Notion, for the support and stay safe.